addressing the problem of agriculture's uh, habitats. Okay, so just before we start, we can go around the table just for an introduction. So, I'm Councillor Anne Lazic, Chair of Mesa and Fire Rescue Authority. Yeah, I'm Stephen Zahn, the Chief Fire Officer for Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service. John Murphy, Chief Council for Merseyside, please. Jane Kennedy, Police and Crime Commissioner. Joe Liddy, Chief of Staff to the PCC. Sue Murphy, Deputy Chief of Police and Crime Commissioner. Linda Maloney, Vice Chair of the Fire Authority. Uh, yes, Les Byron, uh, also Vice Chair and the Sefton Councillor. Ian Cummins, Treasurer of the Fire Authority. Uh, Kelly Johnson, but well, it's now Callaway, actually, I've not changed things. I'm Democratic Services Manager for the, uh, for the Fire Authority. I'm Janet Henshaw, I'm the Solicitor to the Fire Authority Monitoring Officer. Okay, so thank you so much for coming along. Um, just as part of protocol, because this is actually the first meeting of the Peace and Fire Coalition Committee, uh, could we just have nominations of chair? Can I nominate Dave Allen? I'll second that. Any other nominations? Terms of reference members are uh, detailed on page 5 of your report on the general item 3. As the Chair has, uh, has, has just alluded to, uh, they are as set out uh, in front of you at points 1 through 7. Uh, there is a question now that uh, purely that you uh, approve or otherwise the terms of reference. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we'll all have the opportunity to read the, the terms of reference. Thanks, Chair. The purpose of this report, members, is twofold. Firstly, is to request that you approve the draft guiding principles for the collaboration programme, which is attached as Appendix A which is pages 13 through to 20 on your report. Uh, and secondly is that you instruct myself and uh, the Chief Constable to undertake a joint review of the existing potential collabor uh, opportunities for collaboration in line with the, the methodology of the, uh, the Garden Principles, which is set out under paragraph 6 on page 8 of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the report. Uh, which I will come to as, uh, as I move to the to the paper. In terms of the, uh, the collaboration, it's, uh, the collaboration programme, the areas that we are initially uh, suggesting that we focus on fall under corporate services. You can see the, uh, the list under uh, paragraph six. They are ostensibly our transactional support service functions. The paragraph seven is uh, what we're calling ways of working, which is predominantly our, our operational and community safety uh, collaboration opportunities, some of which, we, uh, as you would expect, we are fairly well advanced on anyway. Other areas still require a, uh, a fair degree of work undertaken, not least that which involves Northwest Ambulance Service. And finally is uh, our shared estates opportunities and examples of which the, uh, the clearly here, this building, the Jump Control Centre being probably the uh, most high profile example of, uh, of our success in that regard thus far. Paragraph eight, uh, eight, 9 rather details the methodology that we propose to undertake in terms of the, the programme that also sets some, uh, some milestones. The uh, scoping exercise, which is referred to on the phase one of the uh, in your table at paragraph nine, would commence pending approval from, uh, from this committee. In terms of the, the governance arrangements, they capture the paragraphs 11 through 13, which detail the, the internal governance process. It's also on the flowchart at the very uh, 
the very last page of the garden principles. And paragraph 14 describes how those propose, any proposals that we may uh, identify as being worthy of your condition, uh, consideration and then brought forward to this committee for you to, uh, to approve or otherwise as the, as the case may be. Just uh, move over the page onto page 10, paragraph 16 to 17. It covers the staff implications, just, just to reassure members of the committee that a communication strategy is being developed to ensure that all of our staff are kept fully informed because you should appreciate that there will be a fair degree of interest in the work as, this, uh, as it progresses. The, uh, the legal implications are listed at paragraphs 18 and 19, as indeed are the financial implications and value for money at 20 and 21 and the risk management, health and safety and environmental implications of 22, 23 and 24. Uh, pause at that point, uh, the contents of the, uh, of the report should be self-explanatory, but uh, unless the Chief Constable has anything further to say, let's say for the pause and uh, take questions from themselves if there are any. Only comment for me would be um, everything that uh, the Chief has just laid out there has been drawn up in complete collaboration with ourselves and we're seeing it in the same I've got, I've got nothing to add to it, Dan said. Any comments? Um, I think this is a really good direction of travel. I completely agree with uh, most of what the paper says. But one question I would ask is uh, uh, regarding context and guiding principles are, are fine. Corporate services is in the scope 3.2. I'm talking about the annex here, which is where uh, we start to get to the serious meat of what we're going to be discussing. Um, that's a good and comprehensive list of potential quick gains. For knowing what I know of the potential cliff edge that the force is facing in terms of its funding and the potential threat to, in particular, community policing, for me, B, ways of working, is absolutely crucial to the future benefit to the community of our two services working together. I, I can't, my waking nightmare is the loss of what we currently know of as community style of policing. Not that we lose community policing altogether, there will still be neighbourhood policing, but we are, in, we are very close to that now. There is potential gain from us working very closely together with your people and the forces people on the ground in communities, which I think is, is probably the greatest benefit. Those up above, we should be able to do relatively quickly. But the biggest area is around the, the, the working, ways of working in B. Um, I'm happy to see it as it's laid out there, but for me it's almost, it's the A. It's the, it's the kernel of what I hope we could achieve. And I know we, we talk about keeping them in, in family organisations, I completely respect that. But I feel, in terms of the public that we serve, for them, they're going to be looking to see a blue light response that's as flexible as possible in the community. So I, I thought I'd just set that on the table. I, I think this is a really good piece of work we're going to be doing. And I hope we, we achieve what we've set out to do. <coughs>
because it took me six months to go and meet with Northwest I mean, so. But I do agree, I completely agree with what you're saying, Dave. great strength of what we're embarking on here is the MFS Mid South Police are under the same pressures, we share the same footprint and there's a real joint will amongst the Chief Officer teams and the people in this room to get things done. Our experience with working with North West Ambulance and the North West of the problem to start with is that it's not quite that straightforward and the experience of the JCC here and they're in, they're out, they're in, they're out. I would not like to see North West Ambulance get in the way of what we're trying to achieve, but the principle of what you're suggesting and the incremental approach towards that, I agree. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I mean, uh, I agree with everything that's been said. What we're going to have in the next few months running for Christmas, other than the, the budget stuff, which is going to have a real major impact on how we plan for the future, this is the first step. Um, We've got the overlay also, and it's emerging of the Police Reform and Criminal Justice Draft Bill. That mentions fire and police collaboration. It may be that it's more intended to affect non-metropolitan areas. There may be a separate solution anticipated for metropolitan areas, who knows. But there is so much happening that I think we are going to have to be fleet of foot for the next few months. A journey this meeting is absolutely right. Uh, enabling us to call a meeting uh, at you know, legally short notice um, and uh, deal with changes that are being presented to us as they happen because you know, we are going to be under the roller coaster. NWAS, obviously that's another part, it's another facet, it's another side of the entire blue light issue, isn't it? And I don't think, I know that we have difficulty sitting down and meeting with them, but actually I think we can't leave that as an excuse, can we? We have to. They can not participate, yes, but we have to be making the, the giving leadership on this issue and showing that you know that there is that overlay uh, of blue light and there's cross cross issues. The the vote and the money and the way that they operate are quite different to us and understand that. But we're all in the area of public expenditure at this time, uh, so you know we just try our best with N with NWAS to try and move things forward. I think that's what well. the yeah, so we are just there for them anyway and uh, we'll just show how we can how we can go and go there so hopefully we can open that uh constructive to have with them yeah. in the future and understand the frustration that we're going to have going on for this but uh let's see if we can uh, try and move things on. And uh so any any comments on what we've got no but I'd just like to put on that little thanks to the officers of the way we've done today because yeah we know it's it 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 it's it's been um say a culture change for for